So today's simple little project is an aluminum piece of plate and it's got to be 16 or 18 gauge and about 20 and a half inches by 12 and a half inches OD but I've got to hem it too so I got to make it like a half inch hem on each side all the way around. It's like hemming is basically just folding the ends over mashing it down makes it stronger. It's going to get painted so cool. Pretty good. Around. So I gotta make it one inch is longer. So it'd be half inch, half inch, so it'd be one inch and one inch. Make it a little longer, then hem it by folding that, that half inch, breaking it in the break and kind of mashing it down the other way. Kind of makes it a little stronger and there might be better ways to do it, but this is our way and we'll see. I'll show you along with the process. So if you haven't known me yet, Chris Winarski, we are back again. Today is February 3rd, 2025, and we're taking you along with our I guess it's not welding, but fabrication journey for today. And this is aluminum, 16 gauge. And we cut it to size, well, half size already with the plasma because we don't have a shear big enough to cut that. So now I'm going to cut the rest in the shear over there, take that little nip off. So we already have our 12 and a half measurement, but I made it 13 and a half an inch longer for the half and half. Now we need 20 and a half, so I made it 21 and a half an inch longer. I use my little fine tip marker, June Gold kind of cool blue marker just mark some lines and I'll bring it over to the shear and we'll shear it out it's always good to double check your measurements before you cut it so 13 and a half 21 and a half so 20 and a half plus an inch 21 and a half so we pop it in the shear get my little light on this is a good little light they're like five bucks off Amazon you get a couple of them for like five bucks a piece and I can put one there and one over by the drill or saw over there and that helps pretty good little line it up pretty good and what I like to do with thin metal like that is I like to take another piece of scrap, maybe like this, and put that underneath too. And it just helps clamp it down a little bit more and gives you a little sharper cut. So we'll crank it up, back it off a little, something like that. You probably can't see my marks, but we'll go down slowly, get it close. It looks like I'm on that mark and this one. That came out pretty good and you do want to make sure your settings are right this is on a thinner plate setting and crank that down if you can so let's see how it came out i think that came out pretty good as long as my measurements are good right and you just make sure you shut your flashlight off when you're done too even though it's rechargeable then i already deburred everything else i just want to deburred that side that i cut and we'll start marking it out okay so double check my measurements 12 or 13 and a half, almost exact. 13 and a half, like exact. So that'd be 12 and a half, so that's good with that. An inch long. And 21 and a half exact. 21 and a half, maybe plus like a 128th or 64th or something like that. So that was an inch long. So now I want to mark it half inch all the way around each way. So I'll just take my tape measure and mark one half inch spot. Then I'll take my square and fit it up to a half of an inch. Because if you set it exactly half of an inch, you gotta account for your marker too. So it's almost a 30 second under. And that should be pretty good. I really don't need to go all the way around. I could do like a little bit on the ends like that. And just like that, that should be good. I'm gonna have to cut out the corners because then I'm gonna have to flare it over. So I'll need those corners cut out like that right there, there. Oh, I forgot a mark right over there. If you really want, you can measure from the mark that I marked to that mark. And that should be my measurement. So that'd be 20 and a half about. Yeah, 20 and a half. And then this should be 22 and a half. And that's good. So, get to chopping it. That's where this iron worker machine comes in handy. We got a little shear there, a chopper not thing, like a notcher thing, and a press or not tube notcher over on that side. Uh, here's some of our attachments and everything for it. Some punches and dies. And some tubing notcher stuff. And we'll fire you up. But I got to switch the switch over there. Run it to the back. And I just pretty much eyeballed this. But you can get it like really, really close. 
close. Okay, I could get a little up close shot for you. Hopefully my arm's not in the way. And just like that, you got some corners notched out. What I'll go do is uh, take like a file or a little flapper disc and just clean up those little things so I don't have any little burrs on there. And then we could start breaking it. But I think those, those marks are probably fine. It's not long enough where I need a middle mark. So I think we'll be all right with that. This machine definitely comes in handy. That's a really good shear. We kind of switched the blades around on that and got it really good. Like, okay, so I just took a little file and got the insides and outsides of that. And that worked pretty good. Just a little standard file because that gets the corners really good. Sometimes I use this little guy, but it kind of tears up the corners or tear, the corners tear up the flap disc and that doesn't get in all the way. So a little, sometimes these uh, are, where is it? Like this would work like a regular sanding wheel on that. Gets in those corners a little better, but it's only aluminum. So that file worked fine. So I got two options. I can use this brake, which I think I would rather use, but this alien head things in my way, I might move it. Or I'll see this break over here and see if that's set up for some thinner stuff. This bigger break, but let's see how it's set up. It's kind of set up close for that. I mean, it could work. I'll see how the other one is and then I'll decide. All right, so I'm gonna use this break. I moved the big head. Everything's, everything's always such a mess over here. Fighting <laughs> just to keep it clean. But now I'll start breaking. I'll put you back on the tripod and we'll get going, I guess. So the first thing you want to do is make sure your measurement's pretty good. One thing I like to do is take a piece of metal and put it in between the teeth and your brake mark. Like right here. I don't know if you can see that. But your little brake mark where this comes up. So I like it to be a little less, a little skinnier than this. So it has a little sharper break to it. And that's pretty good right there. And pretty good right there. So I think we're pretty good. And we'll start going. Then you got to adjust your tightness next on it. And I could use a little bit more tightness to it, so I'm gonna tighten it and make sure I'm on my line. That ain't moving. Clamp it in place, and this doesn't have to be 90, it's gotta be over 90, so it's gonna be doesn't matter if you break it over 90, so go as far as we can, and then we'll try mashing it down after that. I'm gonna do one first. This break will go a little farther than the other out. one, so I'm switching over next. to this one, and we'll bend it as far as we can, and then we'll mash it down. See how I kind of put it under a little farther to mash it down? So that's one. I ma I broke it a little bit more on this because it breaks a little bit more that I mashed it, and I might have to mash it a little bit more. Sometimes when we're doing this but process, it, so I can if it's not like a perfect rest. sharp 90 degrees, and it doesn't mash like perfect, it'll fold over a little and it'll shrink or grow. So you just gotta keep your measurements and keep track of it. I don't do these it that often, but I forgot. I gotta notch it one more time and cut that little notch out. So when I fold it over, it misses this and we don't hang up on that. So, pretty simple. This notch comes again. in really good handy for notching like corners like this on sheet metal and stuff. Good to have, really good. I think that came out all right. We're hitting, touching right there, that's why it might have been good to break this, do that second uh, shear notch after because if you're going exactly, if it shrinks and grows a little bit, then you might actually end up hitting on this and breaking on that and that might not be good. Cause even there, I made it a little bit, um, I like would have had a little bit of extra gap, but it's still really close right there. And right there, I think I actually did overgo a little bit, but for what this is, it's perfectly fine. It's just gonna sit and go right on a panel. So I think that's pretty good. Uh, clean it up with some cleaner, aluminum cleaner, and maybe I'll try flattening this a little bit more on the press or something. And, or maybe right here, because if I do it on the press, it might put some marks in it, but we'll get to cleaning it. Just to avoid that double notch like that twice, I would have just had to instead of go over one half inch down and one inch over because a half inch plus a half inch and that probably would work but this is working fine plus this is a little better just gets me not as much gap or whatever i took the little flapper disc and i just cleaned up around the corners there was a little mark on there but once i do it with the scotch brake pad and the oak it'll get it pretty good
So now the customer knows that this is possible that it's going to shrink or stretch just a hair, like a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch. So let's see what we got. We're like twelve. We're like a thirty second over twelve and a half, and we're maybe a sixty fourth over there for twelve and a half, and we need twenty and a half on this side. This side though we stretched almost like a sixteenth of an inch. So about a sixteenth long there, which is fine because it's only a cover plate and maybe a uh, 32nd on the other side. So for what that is, it's perfectly fine now. The customer was well aware of that. I mean, I'm not skilled. I don't do this that often, so I'm not super good with that. There's probably different and better ways to do that. But for me, that's what it is right there. And that's what they wanted. They didn't want to cross break like that. It's just a little plate that goes over a little hole or something. They're just going to, I don't know drill some holes in it and screw it on so i think just to stop it or something like that so we'll give it a little cleaning for them and i think it's good to go all right so for my cleaner i already showed this in a bunch of other videos it's called okite 33 okite 33 it's like a stainless steel passivation cleaner and it cleans stainless steel good but it also does aluminum not as good as aluminum cleaner, i got my solution made up that in the was bucket steel. with water just mixed like one part of that to 10 parts of water and a scotch brake pad and just go over and make sure try to make my grain go in one way not in like circles or anything get the sides pretty good and blend it all pretty good and just wash it off before it dries on there and i think that's it and after you wash it off you could dry it off with an air hose or something and just make sure it's dry and not water stained on there And you're still on the tripod but let me know what you think about that i don't want to touch it right now because my hands are a little dirty and you know stain it but i'll let that dry wash my hands and i'll dry it off a little bit more the inside folds some water might have gotten there so i'll just blow it out with the air hose and i'll do all that and that my friends is a piece of hemmed sheet or whatever you want to call it but i think that came out pretty good and everything else i think looks pretty good though so that's it looks pretty flat we're within our tolerance measures and that's my way of hemming a piece of aluminum. So let me know how you guys do it. Um, not a professional with it and do it from time to time, maybe a couple of times a year or something like that. But I, whenever I do it, I can only get, I tell them like plus or minus an eighth of an inch. That's about it. So let me know if you have a better way of doing that or how you would do it. And thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Comment, like, and share. And hopefully we get to a thousand subscribers pretty soon. I think I'm at like 7, 702 at this time of this video or something, 705, something like that. But see you guys on the next one, I guess. Chris Winarski, over now.